Welcome everybody. Today is the 8th of June 2013 and we are, we are here in uh, Pretoria, South Africa. And I'm here with a dear friend, Rutendo Ngara. And she is a research associate of the Sarchi Tear. And we are here gathered so that we want to know, uh, Rutendo, uh, you know, first perhaps you could very brief, briefly explain what the Sarchi Chair is, and then um, perhaps share some of your experiences and some of your views of what makes this chair special and what it has brought to you. Okay. Um, the SACHI Chair, um, is the SACHI is an acronym for the South African Research Chairs Initiative, um, which was initiated by the Department of Science and Technology in South Africa, and it's uh, managed and administered by the National Research Foundation. And our particular chair here at UNISA... So it is the government and, and the department having decided it? Yes. And then uh, giving it to be administrated by the National Research Council? That's correct. And then uh, there are several chairs. There are several chairs and several universities. Right. And um, the, the so South African Research Chair in Development Education was the first chair at the University of South Africa okay. at UNISA. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, the holder is? The holder is Professor Catherine Odora Hoppers. And um, she is an international expert in areas of development and uh, intellectual property, uh, indigenous knowledge systems, amongst other things. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, the main, um, I think, key to the Saatchi Chair the, in Development Education uh, is the question of human development and, um, and transformative actions towards, um, towards achieving human development within the academic field. Uh, part of that includes the transformation of the academy. So a lot of the research um, that is done within the, the chair is looking at strategic interventions for the transformation of the academy to become a more inclusive and uh, humane um, institution, um, especially within, um, with its engagement with communities. Um, the chair has particular themes uh, and uh, these are research themes. Firstly, it's science, culture, and society. Science, culture, and, and society. society. Mm -hmm. um, another theme is the conditions for the integration of indigenous knowledge systems. Um, another theme is the universities and society, which is really looking at the community engagement aspect. And then um, peace and human development. And these research themes run through the work that the Saatchi Chair herself, uh, Professor Hoppers, does, but also the themes that many of the students, the post-graduate uh, post students, the masters and doctoral students, take up in their studies. And um, it is a transdisciplinary chair. Um, so the, the students and indeed the emeritus professors that are affiliated and associated with the chair come from a vast array of backgrounds, uh, disciplines, such as? such as quantum physics, education, peace studies, um, medicine, um, engineering. Um, they're all coming in to look at these key questions about the transformation of the academy and also sustainable and uh, humane societies, the transformation of society as a whole. Um, so, yes, that's um, the key areas. And uh, how are you uh, embedded there? I am a research coordinator mm -hmm. and I mentioned the four themes. Um, my main aim is uh, looking at coordinating research around the science, culture and society theme. Um, I come from an engineering background, and um, but I'm very interested in how um, science meets um, science meets community and science meets the other, and um, so this is why I have a special interest in that particular um, research theme. And um, I also help with the kind of strategic inputs and intellectual inputs into the chair and just supporting the chair basically in its functions and its running. And you have your own uh, research. Yes, I'm also doing my doctorate um, with the research chair. Um, my doctorate, the working title is Science, um, Science, Culture, Cosmology and Paradigms of Healing. Um, and I'm looking at um, different medical systems, um, specifically Western medicine, um, Chinese medicine and African medicine. And looking at them from the transdisciplinary um, lenses of looking through their cosmologies, their cultures, the cultures that, are, that evolve from the cosmology and the science that evolves 
you know, from the culture that, that holds um, those medical systems in order to try and find points of synergy and uh, points of dissonance where they are and really trying to respond to, um, to, to the questions at an international level of how to integrate medical systems. Um, so I'm really looking into going to the constitutive rules um, of these uh, medical systems um, to see where they can and cannot work together and where they cannot, why they cannot. Basically. You know, uh, in, I know that uh, Catherine uh, puts a lot of emphasis on giving time to students to evolve and to immerse them in uh, conversations so that a theme, that they don't hurry into something but that it really comes out authentically from. And how, uh, you know, how, how did you um, experience that? Yes. Um, yes, um, key um, to, to the methodology that the Sarchi Chair uses is, is, as you've mentioned, an immersion process where um, the idea is to, to, to develop a transdisciplinary um, um, competence but to expand cognition. So within um, this, uh, the students are exposed to, as I mentioned, emeritus professors and intellectuals from across the intellectual and, and disciplinary spectrum. Um, on key questions that are plaguing society so that they're able to um, to look at their own research questions not as this little microcosm um, but as part of a bigger web uh, to answer greater problems that are plaguing society and so I was privileged to be part of this process where um, I have you know have ad access to um, to engagements with um, with professors from, as I mentioned, you know, physics from physics to philosophy to um, to indigenous knowledge, um, in order to see my research question not just within the realms of the healthcare um, arena, but in the realms of the global arena, um, in the in the realms of the economic arena, where I'm not necessarily coming from that background. I don't actually have a background in that, but it has really helped to. Um, to expand uh, my notions of how every little aspect of society fits into the greater, into the greater whole, um, into the macrocosm, and so I think that has been the, the value of this of this immersion program is um, getting that expanded view and feeling that you're actually a part of a great web, um, an interconnected, interdependent um, web, all towards um, the aim of of transformative change, you know, of, uh, of restoration, of, um, of allowing plurality to exist um, and allowing uh, multiple cosmologies and multiple epistemologies to coexist. Um, I think all really ultimately towards looking towards peace, you know, mm -hmm. um, from, from the academic point of view, but, um, but at a cosmic point of view as well. Yes, yes. 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 And you have uh, I'm not sure whether you, how much you want to share. You have a very broad background with which you came. You are not 20 years old, just uh, you know, jumping into this. You have a, a long life experience behind you. Yes. Long and long. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, I should say long about mine, yes. not about yours, yes. but. Yes, I'm, I'm coming from um, an engineering background. Mm -hmm. um, I first studied electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, I was very interested in how engineering actually really impacts human development mm -hmm. and uh, in my search I then moved on to study biomedical engineering at a master's level and um, that was you know part of my search to find the humanity mm -hmm. you know within within the engineering and uh, the journey then took me through to medicine I, mm -hmm. I, I started you know medical studies mm -hmm. also looking for that search and uh, Finally, ended up, you know, here with the doctorate. Um, along the way, I also did other things like fashion design and uh, teaching. Um, I think just really in my own space, trying to find a spa place to expand my own cognition. So, coming into a chair, which actually um, 
validates that yeah. um, was very I think profound many people who, who listen now they will say wow where is this because n normally in academia uh, you have this experience that yes. you are supposed to be in a box and to absolutely, fit there absolutely. and here the box is not there or it's very large absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely so just um, allowing and, and what it, uh, has helped is um, for me to integrate these different experiences which seem to be disparate at first it seemed yeah. I, was, I seemed to be going in directions which seemed not to have a common thread but um, through the immersion program I've been able to find that common thread through my very varied background. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. Mm. What else would you like to share with the students of the world who might watch us now? Um, well I think uh, just one of the key um, themes or kind of the, the key um, you know, tenets of the Saatchi chair is um, Professor Catherine Dora Hoppers always tells you know new students when they come in that when you engage in a research project, um, you need to be able to own it, but also own up to it, um, and you need to develop your leadership um, capacity through that project, and it needs to be something that comes from your gut. You know, it needs to be something that sings in your heart and not just an academic exercise, and. Um, I think I'd I'd love to see more students approaching their mm. their studies mm. at, from a gut place, from mm. a place of the gut, from mm. a place of the heart, and uh, from a place of um, wanting to make a positive change um, in in the world, um, a restorative and transformative um, change in the world. So basically, uh, creating. Uh, change agents and I think that's that's the, 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 the key to that your research work your academic endeavors must be equipping you to become change agents I think that's the very no, I, you know that uh, I resonate a lot with the term dignity and to me this is the manifestation of dignity what you talk about in lives personal lives and uh, and in society and in global society yes and uh, the trend in academia is not that at the moment. Yes. The main trend is to pr not produce change agents. Yes, yes. So I, I personally am very, very impressed and uh, I'm very impressed also by your personal journey and uh, how you have been able to bring all the threads of your life together so that you see that there is um, a unity there. And uh, so uh, I also wish you all the strength you need Thank you very to much. go further now. Thank mm -hmm. you. I think um, just drawing on from your dignity and the change agent, what's also key is that the change is not a necessarily a change that you're, imp yeah, that you're imparting out without, but it's a change within. Mm. And um, it's, I think that's where the dignity comes in, mm -hmm. is finding mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. empowerment from mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. through an academic endeavor, which mm -hmm. would not traditionally be a means of finding that. Mm. Um, mm. So yes. Yeah. Anything more or should we thank yeah. our audience for watching us, for being with us. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very Thank much. You.